Regional Supervisor for the North Carolina Division of Air Quality's Asheville Regional Office. I've been appointed to be the hearing officer for this public hearing by the Director of the Division of Air Quality, Mike Eberzinskis. My purpose this evening is to receive your comments, either written or oral, for the consideration and the issuance of a new air quality permit to Carolina Sunrock LLC Burlington North location for the construction and operation of a drum mix asphalt plant and a truck mix concrete batch plant. The proposed location is 12971 South North Carolina Highway 62, Burlington, Caswell County, North Carolina. The focus of this hearing and the only focus is to receive public comments on the proposed air quality permit as they relate to the applicability of air quality regulations. The Division of Air Quality is conducting this public hearing digitally to allow for public participation while protecting public health under current guidance to prevent the spread of COVID-19. The public hearing announcement was published in the Burlington Times News on August 9th, 2021, and the Caswell Messenger on August 11th, 2021, and on the Division of Air Quality's website on August 9th, 2021. During this virtual public hearing, we will be receiving oral comments from those individuals who pre-registered to speak at this event. If you are having technical difficulties with WebEx, you can use the chat feature in WebEx to ask questions or seek assistance. You can also visit the Division of Air Quality's website using the link in the public notice for this hearing for instructions on various ways to connect to WebEx. Joining me for this hearing tonight by WebEx are, from DAQ's Raleigh Central Office, we have Michael Pajetra, the Deputy Director for the Division of Air Quality. We have Zainab Nassif, Division of Air Quality's Public Information Officer, and Rahat Ashik, Environmental Engineer with the DAQ Rules Development Branch. From the DAQ's Winston-Salem Regional Office, we have Ray Stewart, Regional Supervisor, Davis Murphy, Compliance Supervisor, and Leo Governale, Environmental Engineer. I want to thank everyone involved in getting this public hearing scheduled and organized with special thanks to Rahat Ashik and Zainab Nassif for their expertise in setting up this event. There may be dignitaries and elected officials present, present, present at this virtual public hearing, and we thank you for your interest in attendance. The Division of Air Quality's regulations do not require a hearing or comment period for the issuance of this permit. However, due to significant public interest, the Director of the Division of Air Quality has decided to open a comment period and conduct this public hearing to receive pertinent public comments on whether to allow or deny issuance of this air permit to Carolina Sunrock LLC Burlington North location. The comment period for this permit opened on August 9, 2021 and will close on September 22 at 5 p.m. The required duration for a comment period is 30 days per air quality rules. In addition to your oral comments tonight, the division is also accepting comments via email and electronic mail. The email address is displayed via mail and electronic mail, sorry, and the email address is displayed on your screen. Copies of the permit application, the draft air permit application review, the draft air permit, and other information concerning the Carolina Sunrock LLC application are available to the public at the following two locations. First, the North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality, Winston-Salem Regional Office, located at 450 West Haynes Mill Road, Suite 300, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Secondly, the material can be reviewed at our Division of Air Quality Central Office, located at 217 West Jones Street in Raleigh, North Carolina. If you haven't done so and wish to review these materials in person, they are available to you during normal business hours at the locations I just mentioned. However, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, an appointment is required. Please call in advance to make an appointment. A copy of the draft air permit and the permit application review are also available on the Division of Air Quality's website at www.ncair.org. The order of events for this hearing are as follows. First, Leo Governale of the Winston-Salem office who reviewed the permit application and wrote the draft permit will discuss the application, the air quality permit, and the air permitting procedures. This will be followed by the public comment period. We will receive oral comments from those individuals who pre-register to speak at this event. This will allow us to have an accurate hearing record. Only those who have pre-registered will be called on to speak. To provide enough time for public comments, this meeting will be conducted in the following manner. All efforts will be made to call speakers in the same order of your registrations. Oral statements will be limited to a maximum of two minutes 
in order to hear as many citizens as possible tonight. This public hearing is scheduled to adjourn no later than 9 p.m. We will call the names of each pre-registered speakers in order, and our WebEx host will unmute the speaker when it is their turn to speak. We'll also announce the names of the next speaker in the queue so they can prepare to provide comments. Please do not speaking, start speaking until the WebEx host has indicated that you are able to unmute your microphone. Your time will begin when you have unmuted your microphone. We will keep track of your time and will announce when your two minutes have expired. Please respect the time of all who wish to present oral comments tonight by adhering to the time limits and closing your remarks as quickly as possible once time is up. Cross-examination of the person presenting comments or me, the hearing officer will not be allowed. However, as the hearing officer, I may ask questions to the presenter for clarification. Questions directed to the Division of Air Quality staff members will not be answered during this hearing. If you have questions for DAQ staff, we can provide you with our contact information, so you may contact them after the meeting during normal business hours. After receiving comments this evening, the hearing record will be closed. However, the period for submitting comments does not close until Wednesday, September 22nd at 5 p.m. Again, the only focus of this virtual public hearing is the presentation of comments related to air quality issues associated with the new air quality permit for the Carolina Sunrock LLC Burlington North facility and the applicability of air quality regulations. Only relevant air quality comments can be considered in my final recommendations to our division director. I will now call on Leo Governale to discuss the air permitting procedures and permit application review. All right, Leo. Good evening. As Brendan mentioned, my name is Leo Governale, environmental engineer with the Division of Air Quality's Winston-Salem Regional Office, and I'll provide an overview of the Carolina Sunrock Burlington North Air, app, air Permit application. On April 22nd, 2021, our office received an application for a new permit from Carolina Sunrock LLC for the construction and operation of a drum mix asphalt plant and a truck mix concrete batch plant. The applicant has requested that natural gas, propane, or fuel oil be allowed for use at this site to be located at 12971 South North Carolina Highway 62. The application included the appropriate forms, project description, supporting documents, and application fee. The applicant was required to demonstrate compliance with DAQ's rules uh, for areas without zoning, as in regards to this site, by posting the sign on the property and publishing a legal notice in a local newspaper. The sign was posted on April 1st, 2021, and the legal notice was posted in the Caswell Messenger on April 7th, 2021. The application was considered complete for processing on April 22nd, 2021. The asphalt plant will have a capacity of 250 tons per hour and will consist of the following equipment. One drum dryer mixer controlled by a cyclone in series with a bag filter, firing either propane, natural gas, number two, recycle number two, or recycle number four fuel oil, with an 80 million BTU per hour maximum heat input burner. Five hot mix asphalt storage silos with capacities ranging from 150 to 200 tons five truck loadouts, two natural gas or number two fuel oil fired liquid asphalt cement heaters with 1.1 and 1.2 million BTU per hour maximum heat inputs, associated fuel oil, diesel, and liquid asphalt cement storage tanks, a recycled asphalt pavement or wrap crushing system consisting of a 65 ton per hour wrap crusher, four conveyors, and one double deck screen will be constructed. The truck mix concrete batch plant will have a capacity of 120 cubic yards per hour and will consist of the following. One 200 ton capacity cement storage silo, one 200 ton capacity fly ash storage silo, one truck loadout, one 25 ton maximum capacity cement fly ash way batcher, and one 50 ton maximum capacity aggregate way batcher. All of this equipment, with the exception of the aggregate way batcher, will be controlled with a bag filter. As part of the DAQ's technical review, the emission sources and control devices associated with the asphalt plant wrap crushing system 
and concrete batch plant were evaluated. This involved a comprehensive review and discussion of all applicable state and federal air quality rules and regulations. Also compliance with state and federal air, air emission standards for particulate matter, sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxides, volatile organic compounds, hazardous and toxic air pollutants were evaluated. In addition, this facility will be subject to state and federal visible air standards, fugitive dust control requirements for non-process sources and prevention of objectionable odors. For avoidability of federal Title V permitting program and for complying with the state's air toxics program, the facility has requested an annual production limit of 500,000 tons of asphalt while not combusting fuel with more than 0.5% sulfur by weight. Additionally, the sulfur content of the number of fuel oil combusted in the asphalt cement heaters will be limited to 15 parts per million sulfur by weight. Permit will require the facility to conduct stack testing to demonstrate compliance with state and federal visible and particulate matter emission standards. Additional testing may also be required for carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxide, and volatile organic compounds. Permit will also contain a specific condition regarding compliance with any lawfully adopted local zoning ordinances. Record keeping and reporting of the asphalt monthly production, fuel usage, and facility-wide sulfur dioxide and carbon monoxide emissions will also be required. The applicant submitted a statewide, excuse me, a site-wide national ambient air quality standard, also known as NAC's dispersion modeling analysis that was received on March 2nd, 2021 and revised on March 10th, 2021. The analysis was conducted to evaluate the combined criteria, air pollutant ambient impacts from all operations located at the site, which included emissions from the proposed construction and operation of the asphalt plant and concrete batch plant. Site-wide criteria pollutants, including particulate matter, nitrogen dioxide, and sulfur dioxide were modeled for comparison with the NAC standards. Ultimately, the site-wide dispersion modeling analysis of criteria air pollutant emissions adequately demonstrated compliance with the NACs on a source-by-source -source basis. The modeling analysis was reviewed and approved by the DAQ Air Quality Analysis Branch on March 23, 2021. <clears> the <throat> facility will be required to, model, to operate the model sources in strict accordance in the manner in which they were modeled, including placement of the emission sources, location of the configuration of the emission points, and operation of the sources. To ensure compliance, the facility shall operate these sources in compliance with previously mentioned operating restrictions. Also, an operable water truck shall be available on site at all times while the plant is operating. The roads and unloading and loading work areas shall be adequately maintained by wet suppression to minimize fugitive dust emissions. The applicant also submitted a toxic air pollutant dispersion modeling analysis dated April 22nd, 2021 for the facility's toxic air pollutant emissions. This modeling analysis was reviewed and approved, approved on July 27, 2021 by the DAQ Air Quality Analysis Branch, concluding that the modeling analysis demonstrated compliance with ambient, acceptable ambient levels on a source-by-source -source basis for all model <clears throat> toxic air pollutants. As mentioned in the next, Excuse me, discussion. This facility will be required to operate the model sources in strict accordance in the manner that they were modeled. This concludes my portion of the presentation. I want to thank everyone for your interest and in allowing me to discuss the various features of this project. Should you have any questions or need additional information, please contact me by telephone or email. Thanks again. Thank you, Leo. Uh, at this time, we will hear from those who pre-registered to provide oral comments this evening. There's been a request in the chat to go from two minutes allotment to three minutes allotments, which we would like to accommodate, but there's 
quite a bit of people registered to speak tonight, so we're going to, with the two-minute uh, speaking time to allow everybody an opportunity to speak. When your name is called, our WebEx host will enable you to unmute your microphone so you can provide your comments. To ensure our records are complete, please clearly state your name and who you are representing. Your comments will be recorded, so speak. please speak loudly and clearly toward the microphone or telephone. Please do not start speaking until you have unmuted your microphone. It is critically important for the audio clarity of your comments that you turn off any speakers that you have that can create feedback. If there is significant feedback on your line, we may need to mute your call and attempt to come back to you later. If we call your name but cannot hear you, please check to see if you are muted on the WebEx screen on your computer. If you're having audio issues, try a different method of audio connection within WebEx or use the Call Me feature to have WebEx call your personal telephone. If we still cannot hear you, we will proceed to the next registered speaker, but we'll call your name again at the end of the hearing. I will do my best to pronounce your names correctly and apologize in advance for any errors. And as I said, we have many commenters tonight, but as a reminder, we also have the email and voicemail options for supplying comments regarding this permit application. Uh, oral comments are just one venue. Uh, this is my chance to listen to your concerns. Please be respectful of others in your manner of speaking and abide by the two minute time limit. We will now begin taking oral comments. So first we have Crystal Cavalier, followed by Anita Faust. So Crystal. Uh, Crystal, uh, if you've uh, dialed in my phone, uh, please press star three so I can identify your line. Okay, Crystal, if you've uh, dialed by phone, uh, please press star three so I can identify your line. Okay. We'll move on. Uh, next, we have Anita Faust, followed by Galen Barama. Okay. Anita, if you've uh, called in by telephone, please press star three so I can identify your line. Anita, if you've dialed by telephone, please press star three so I can identify your line. Thank you. Okay. I believe this is Anita, please go ahead. Okay, this is regarding air pollution from the asphalt plant. Could you introduce yourself, please? Hello, I am Anita Faust, a member of the Anderson community. According to subchapter 01C, once the following information is brought to your attention, you can require an environmental document. The University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill School of Global Public Health completed a scientific health survey flyer attached on the area why the Burlington North facility is proposed to be cited in Caswell County. I and the others are expressing to you, the PENR Deck Agency, that, one, the proposed activity, an asphalt plant, is of such an unusual nature being placed so closely to homes and with such widespread implications that are concerned for its environmental effects that we must express to the DENR DEC agency to deny the permit due to its negative impact to human health. The Anderson community is comprised mostly of low income, elderly, black farmers where food for humans and animals are still grown. Residents report higher than average rates of multiple chronic illnesses. Asthma is three times more prevalent than state average one. High blood pressure and type 2 diabetes are twice as prevalent too. Lung disease and a mental health diagnosis were both more prevalent three. Caswell County Human Health Issues 1. Caswell County, compared to the state average, has higher rates of death due to heart disease, cancer, and diabetes too. Caswell County, compared to the state average, has higher than average rate of preterm births, child mortality, and infant death 3. And Caswell County, compared to the state average, has nearly half the average number of primary care physicians. Governor Cooper, Secretary Bison, and Director Abrixinskis, please don't permit them to kill us. Require the environmental documentation and stop the asphalt plant. This is regarding air pollution from the asphalt plant. Thank you. 
Uh, next, we have Galen Barama, followed by Mark Barker. Hi, right, can you hear me? So go ahead. Your line has been unmuted. Great, thanks. Good evening, everyone. I'm Galen Borma, Executive Vice President and General Counsel of Sunrock. Sunrock is dedicated to building and operating the proposed facilities in strict compliance with all laws. It's easy to frighten people with doomsday predictions, but I urge those of you who have not already made up your minds to listen to the experts and look at the facts and the data. These kinds of facilities have been the subject of years of vigorous scrutiny by the EPA and by the DEQ, who have evaluated all the accusations you've heard about their ill effects and have looked beyond the accusations to the facts. We believe the laws and regulations under which these facilities will operate and Sunrock's historical policies and practices offer ample protection to the environment and to the citizens of Caswell County. These facilities will bring good, needed jobs and important sources for transportation construction materials, which need to be close to the sites where they will be used. I also want to clarify one part of the record. As you may be aware, this is the second time Sunrock has applied for an air permit for this site. Sunrock disputed the denial of the first permit. That case was never decided by a court. Instead, Sunrock voluntarily agreed to resubmit this application, supplementing it with additional modeling data far beyond what is typically required for these kinds of facilities. This is one of the most closely scrutinized asphalt plants in the state, and the information and modeling data provided by Sunrock clearly established that these facilities comply with all regulatory requirements and pose no threat to the community, as Sunrock has always contended. Sunrock looks forward to receiving the air permit for the site in a timely manner, as it's been under review and subject to public comment for over two years at this point. And Sunrock looks forward to doing business in a safe and compliant manner in Caswell County for years to come. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Mark Barker, followed by Daisha Williams. Good evening. My name is Mark Barker. I'm on staff at the Blue Ridge Environmental Defense League. I'm submitting comments this evening on behalf of Brettel and our members in Caswell County and North Carolina. The draft permit made available for public comment on the website contains numerous errors, including duplicate numbering of conditions and an exclusion of a reference condition. In addition, there are several issues with the error modeling. Brettel respectfully requests this draft permit be denied. Air modeling is used to determine operational and air pollution control parameters and emission rates for toxins to be placed in the permit. Therefore, it is very important that the air modeling is done correctly. There are several changes with the air modeling from the 2019 application to the current application with no detailed reasonable explanation as to why. The previous air modeling indicated that the background concentration for NO2 is about 60 micrograms per cubic meter. Now, just a few months later, DAQ is stating that it is 15.3 micrograms per cubic meter. Also, the sum of the air modeling files used building parameters that did not reflect the change in stack heights from the previous application. This affects the modeled concentration results. In the draft permit section A, item number three, there was a reference to condition A20. There is no A20 listed in the draft permit. There also appears to be some misnumbering of section A. Items number 15, 16, and 19 are repeated. Condition A, 10B, 1, and 2 are unclear with regards to the reference statute. Conditions A, 11, B, 1 should be excluded from the draft permit as it applies to facilities commenced prior to April 2008. Brettle request a corrected, revised version of the draft permit and air modeling be posted with an allowable extension for public comments. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Daisha Williams, followed by Richard Long. Williams. Hi, my name is Daisha Williams, and I'm the Environmental Justice Manager for Clean Air NC. Um, as the Environmental Justice Manager, it's my job to view this permit application from an equity lens. Um, and I'm so glad that data got brought up because our organization actually has a monitor, uh, air monitor set up within a mile radius of the proposed site measuring PM 2.5 emissions, which is an air pollutant that can threaten human health at even moderate exposure levels. Specifically, a measurement of over 100 is considered unhealthy for sensitive groups. These past two weeks, I've been keeping track of the data coming from the monitor. And over the course of 13 days, the monitor has shown PM 2.5 levels of over 100 several times. Asphalt plants are significant sources of air pollution emitting harmful 
harmful measures of particulate matter, among other harmful toxins. Thus, our concern for these frontline communities is heightened and that these that the new asphalt plant permit would cause disproportionate exposures to air pollution in an area with already existing concerns when it comes to the quality of their air. The DAQ EJ report for this proposed site states that the one within the one mile radius surrounding the Burlington North facility displays higher percentages of black and elderly populations as well as a per capita income level moderately lower than the state. These are the communities that will have to bear the brunt of air pollution, dust, noise, track, truck traffic, and exposure to harmful toxins. Therefore, we recommend that additional attention is paid to these tracks through a continued stakeholder involvement process that includes a rigorous monitoring program that provides transparent reporting of data. The DAQ should facilitate a process in which community members are made aware of and participate in decisions that will fundamentally affect their quality of life. Environmental justice is a priority for both the Biden and Cooper administrations, as well as the EPA. The continued disproportionate harm that these industries have in low income communities of color constitutes a clear violation of these priorities and therefore effective solutions are required. DAQ has an opportunity to make a decision that improves the lives of vulnerable North Carolina communities. Adequate monitoring and reporting requirements would help us protect and equip the surrounding community against exposure. Thus, we urge you to do everything in your power to protect public health when issuing air permits for facilities that demonstrate harm in an already sensitive area. Thank you for your attention to these very important issues and we look forward to continue to work with you to make North Carolina a cleaner and more prosperous state. Thank you. We have now Richard Long followed by Pat Warren. Richard, if you've uh, dialed in my phone, please press star three so I can identify your line. Thank you. Richard, okay. I believe I believe this is Richard. Uh, please introduce yourself and please make your comment. Thank you. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Richard Long. I don't have anything written down. I'm just going to tell you the way I feel real fast. Uh, what about all the people that live really close to this proposed plant that has uh, major health conditions? I don't think this asphalt chemicals, air pollution would help them. It would probably worsen their health conditions. And like I said in my email, life is more important than a money-making business. Uh, and we have proof of the people that have health conditions. Uh, my wife, for example, has a blood disorder. Uh, if the asphalt plant comes in, we will have to move. She cannot be around any chemicals, air pollution, or anything like the asphalt. So what about 35 years? We saved up money to buy this house, which, by the way, I live closer than anybody, my property joins their property. Um, so what about all the money that we worked hard for? Home values, not just mine, but everybody around here. I'm trying to sell my house right now. I've had three people back out because we had to disclose the potential asphalt plant. They backed out. I might not even get what I paid for the house. So I'm pretty upset right now, yeah. And I'm also concerned for the people that live in Casel, the traffic. Uh, There's so many negatives to this. And uh, I'm just speaking from my heart right now, and I just hope that they don't come in. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Long. Now we'll move on to Pat Warren, followed by Evangeline Vincent Gaudet. Pat, go ahead. Your line has been unmuted. Yes. Um, hi, I'm Pat Warren, and I'm representing myself. I live in Prospect Hill. According to the draft environmental justice report, Carolina Sunrock LLC, Burlington, North Carolina, Burlington North facility, written by NCDEQ and dated August 9th, 2021, quote, environmental justice is the fair treatment and meaningful involvement of all people, regardless of race, color, national origin or income with respect to the development, implementation and enforcement of environmental laws, regulations and policies that comes from the US EPA. 
The report goes on to state that Caswell County is designated as a tier one county by the NC Department of Commerce. Tier one counties encompass the 40 most distressed counties based on average unemployment rate, median household income, percentage growth in population, and adjusted property tax per capita. Environmental justice is well served when the treatment and meaningful involvement of all people, regardless of race, color, national origin or income with respect to the development, implementation and enforcement of environmental laws, regulations and policies cannot be usurped by an entity that has the financial means to do so by causing fear of reprisal and enormous financial hardships on an already impoverished community with the possible effect of rendering them mute. This can have profound effects well beyond the one mile radius and the census tract upon which uh, the report centers. I ask you to consider these facts and deny the air quality permit from Sun Carolina Sunrock. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Warren. Now we have Evangeline Vincent Gaudet, followed by Phil Barfield. Good evening. I do it. Yes. Can you hear I'm me? sorry, your line has been unmuted. Yes, um, your line has been unmuted. Please go ahead. Okay. Good evening. My name is Evangeline Vincent Godbett, and I live at 441 Baines Road, Burlington. I am one of the citizens of this county that have been sued by this company because I exercise my right to object to a local permit. I am requesting today that you delay a decision on the air permit until after a court ruling in this lawsuit. If the applicant loses, our county's high impact development ordinance, HIDO, will apply, which will affect the location and configuration of the projects. At that time, new air permit applications will be required. No permit should be considered until this matter is decided in a court of law. Thank you. Thank you. Now we have Phil Barfield followed by Karen Tate Gray. Hello. Hello, this is Phil Barfield. I'm representing myself. Carolina Sunrock is planning to come into our county with three asphalt plants, three truck mix concrete batch plants, and a 630 acre rock quarry site. The plant activities will pollute our air, our land, and our water with particulate matter and toxic chemicals. Some chemicals will be released from smokestacks at toxic levels higher than considered healthy for humans and we will require DAQ permits to do so. Carolina Sunrock is requesting permission to pollute these toxic chemicals at maximum rates that are much higher than they will produce to, and I quote, afford the facility operational flexibility. As an example, Carolina Sunrock estimated they will pollute a total of 198 pounds per year of benzene from the entire facility. However, you are drafting a permit to allow them to pollute 854 pounds per year from just the asphalt drum, allowing the facility to pollute over four times more than they estimated does not improve the outdoor quality of North Carolina or protect its citizens. BAQ should not permit toxic chemicals at these high rates and should restrict them as much as possible to protect the environment and our citizens. I request DAQ to deny these air um, to deny this air permit application from Carolina Sunrock. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barfield. Next we have Karen Tate Gray, followed by Leslie Zimmerman. Karen, uh, if you've dialed in by phone, please press star three so I can identify your line. Thank you. I believe this is Karen. My name is Karen Tate Gray. I'm a member of the Anderson Committee. Requesting the Division of Air Quality to deny the most recent air quality permit uh, that Summer Rock has submitted to the Burlington North Fault Plant. The location of this site is adjacent to tons of many health issues. Ms. Gray, can you speak up a little bit? We're having a hard time hearing you. 
location of this site is adjacent to homes of many health issues and no means to relocate. The health of these individuals can be negatively impacted by the toxicity of the held by the plant. It's brought to my attention that the present application has the same level of nitrogen oxide that caused the permit to be denied previously. And it appears that other levels of toxic chemicals will be at greater than what has been felt. These are just a few examples. Uh, and it will have a negative impact on the air quality in our community. Not only affect the air pollution, but all uh, truck traffic and the fugitive dust from the trucks will also pollute our air. Roads have not light and noise pollution. My concern is that Sunrock is not only planning this plant, but at least one more plant in a rock quarry to be poured in the same general vicinity. And this heightens also the, uh, the area who's there to go. And now. the negative impact that Ms. Gray, I think we're losing you. Are you still on the line? Still here. Okay, that was your two minutes. Do you have any final comments? That's it. Well, thank you very much, Ms. M Ms. Gray. Uh, or was that Mrs. Zimmerman? I'm sorry. No, this is Leslie Zimmerman. <laughs> thank you, Leslie. <laughs> so now we have Leslie Zimmerman followed by Reverend Brian Schaffner. Good evening, my name is Leslie Zimmerman. I live in Leesburg. The materials for public review do not adequately describe the facility. Information was received after the deadline, making it very hard for me to review and understand the permit request. Additionally, there was only one notice in the newspaper. That's not enough. Given the amount of interest, it should have been in the newspaper calendar for the remaining time. This has kept many in the dark. No radio announcements either. Please inform the people of Caswell and neighbors of the intent of this company. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Zimmerman. Uh, now we have the Reverend Brian Schaffner, followed by Rebecca Long. Reverend uh, Schaffner, if you've uh, dialed in by phone, please press star three so I can identify your line, please. Okay, go ahead. Hello, my name is Reverend Brian Schaffner of the Edmondson Community. I'm speaking in reference to the Burlington North permit. I'm asking for this air permit to be denied for several reasons. One, reason UNC School of Gillen's Global Health conducted a health survey in the Anderson community and found that this EJ community is very sick. How sick? 77% to be exact is sick. Also, the community is already full of other cumulative impacts. God created clean air to be free, and we should not be forced to choose or trade clean air for daily pollution. Just in case we missed the definition of air pollution, it is the the presence in our introduction into the air, a substance which has harmful or poisonous effects. These poisonous effects will affect people who have asthma, COPD, skin disease, heart disease, cancer, vascular disease. I can go on and on with this, but just in case you missed the point of why our health is more important than a pollutant industry, please read coronavirus and air pollution on the Harvard EDU website, for it finds that breathing more polluted air over many years may itself worsen the effects of COVID-19. We know COVID-19 has hit the black and brown communities very hard. Why add another stressor to the list? Let the people breathe freely and deny the air permit. Do not give them a permit to kill. Do not give them a license to kill. Deny the pollutant industry and allow us to live. God bless you all. And plus, choose life over pollution. Let the people breathe and let the people breathe freely and let the people breathe clean air. And most importantly, let the people breathe clean air unconditionally. Thank you. 
All right, next we have Rebecca Long, followed by Christy Ian. Ms. Long, if you've uh, dialed in by Hi. phone. My name is Jennifer Sulalik. I'm reading public comments on behalf of the Anderson community for the hearing on September 20th, 2021. This comment is from Rebecca Long. As a concerned resident of the Anderson community, I am worried that this polluting asphalt plant will negatively affect my overall health. In Bethel, North Carolina, we learned from the Blue Ridge Environmental Defense League that m almost half the residents reported increased negative health outcomes since the polluting asphalt plant moved into their community. The Anderson community cannot afford additional threats to our health. Stop the plant. Thank you. Next, we have Chris, Kristen Enoch, followed by Brian Schaffner. This comment is from Christy Enoch. As a concerned resident of the Anderson community, I would like to state that we are already at greater health risk than most people in the state because of the low numbers of doctors in Coswell County. The 2019 Coswell County Community Health Assessment reported that there are only 3.8 doctors per 10,000 residents compared to the state average of 23.5. That's a six times higher chance for that other North Carolinians will have their health conditions attended to, and many of them don't have to worry about the added burden of neighborhood pollution. Stop the plan. May I ask who's speaking? Was that Christy Enoch speaking? All right, next we have Brian Schaffner, followed by Tracy Schaffner. This comment is from Brian Schaffner II. I have lived in the Anderson community for 28 years. I am worried that the polluting asphalt plant will increase our community's exposure to benzene, a known carcinogen. A 2014 study linked the exposure to benzene with productive, reproductive, cardiovascular, endocrine, immune, neurological, and respiratory health issues. Our community is already impacted by health disparities, and we cannot afford to have this polluting industry threaten our health even more. Next, we have Tracy Schaffner, followed by Craig Schaffner. This comment is from Tracy Schaffner. I have lived in the Anderson community for 25 years. Polluting asphalt plants produce harmful chemicals like benzene. I am worried that the exposure to benzene produced by the plant will cause health issues in my community. A 2014 study found that exposure to benzene caused neurological issues. Please protect the health of our community and stop the plant. Next, we have Craig Schaffner, followed by Davida Jones. This comment is from Craig Schaffner. I've lived in the Anderson community for 30 years. A recent health assessment conducted by UNC and the NCIPH found that 77% of Anderson residents have a formally diagnosed chronic illness and 48% of residents with three or more chronic illnesses. Please do not allow more health risks in our community. The many impacts of this plant on top of the many health disparities already faced by other residents and myself would be devastating. Next we have Davida Jones followed by Ella Love. This comment is from Davida Jones. I live in the Anderson community. My community is already impacted by health disparities, which will be made worse if the polluting asphalt plant is allowed to operate. Asphalt plants may produce harmful chemicals such as particulate matter. A study supported by the University of Alberta found that when people breathe in these harmful particles, their bodies produce an inflammatory response, which has been shown to cause chronic illnesses over the long term. Please protect my community's health and stop the plant industry from moving in. Next, we have Ella Love, followed by Regina Albino. This comment is from Dakova Rogers. Where did Regina go?
Excuse I me, I'm looking. The I'm asking for Ella Love, followed by Regina, or Regina Albano. Uh, I think we're on Regina. Do we have Regina Albino? Rounding her back up, she disappeared. Reverend Shelf No. Marie for Regina. Hello, my name is Regina Albano. I live in the Anderson community. The pollutant facility would produce high amounts of sulfur dioxide, as shown in the modeling done by the North Carolina Division of Air Quality. A 2020 study found that exposing exposure to higher levels uh, of sulfur dioxide is associated with increased death from COPD, cardiovascular disease, respiratory diseases. Our community is already impacted by health disparities. Please do not make them worse by granting a permit to the, this polluting industry. Next, we have Rodney Lawson followed by Antonio McCain. A lot of them uh, are nervous. Hello, my name, I got you, Tony. Hello, this is Reverend Shelfton. My name is Antonio McCain, and I am a resident of the Anderson community. I am worried about the toxic chemicals that the asphalt plant may produce. The Blue Ridge Environmental Defense League <clears throat> uh, states that asphalt plants can produce hydrogen sulfides, which are known to trigger asthma. I do not want to make my asthma worse. All right, do we have uh, a Cedric Chavez Jr. followed by Charles Love? So I do not hear a Cedric Chavez Jr. All right, we'll move on. Do we have a Charles Love? I'll read it for you. Uh, hello. My name is Charles Love, and I live in the Anderson community. I am worried about my children's health. As a study funded by Johns Hopkins found that living near pollutant asphalt plant was associated with an increased risk of asthma attacks among children. Please protect our, our young residents from this pollution. All right, do we have an Edward Schaffner? I live in the Anderson community. I am worried about the polluting asphalt plants. And the Edward, we seem to have lost you. All right, moving on to Ann Paler. Do we have an Ann Paler? Okay, moving on to Mashaya Jones. Do we have a Mashaya Jones? Moving on to Joseph Wiley. Do we have a Joseph Wiley?
Some of them are afraid to read. I'll read for you. Hello, my name is Joseph Wiley, and I am concerned resident of the Anderson community. Our community ha has much higher rates of asthma compared to the county and state average. Asphalt plants are known to produce harmful chemicals. In a 2021 study in Nigeria, researchers found that exposure to these chemicals can trigger asthma attacks and reduce uh, lung function. Please protect the health of my community and stop the asphalt plant. Okay, next we have a George Sellers. Hello, my name is George Sellers. A study founded by John Hopkins found that living close to polluting asphalt plant increased the risk of asthma attacks. The study reported that living close to a source of air pollutant uh, resulted in having more than 12 asthma attacks in a year. My community already has much higher rates of asthma compared to the state and county levels, and we cannot afford the additional threat to our health. Next, we have a Brenda Harris. Hello, my name is Brenda Harris and I am concerned resident of the Anderson community. 2014 study in China found that prolific aromic hydro PAHs, which may be produced by asphalt plants, are associated with an increased risk of diabetes. Our community is already negatively impacted by health disparities, and we cannot afford to have this polluting plant in our community, especially by the e in this EJ community. Next, we have Donna Turner. Okay, moving on. Next, we have Felicia Love. Do we have a Felicia? We'll move on to Alma Knight. Do we have an Alma Knight? Seems like we have stage fright. You, is it okay if I continue to read for him? Certainly. Awesome. So as she comes back out, we'll continue. Excuse me? Alma, are you reading for Alma Knight right now? Yes. Hello, my name is Alma Knight, and I am a resident of the Anderson community. I'm worried about the toxic fumes that the asphalt plant will produce, including benzene, which is known kerosene of causes leukemia per, per a fact sheet created by the Blue Ridge Environmental Defense League. The Anderson community cannot afford this risk to our health. Next, we have Maurice Schaffner. Hello, my name is Ronnie Schaffner, and I am a concerned resident of the Anderson community. I, I ask that you stop the plan from moving into our community. Per a fact sheet from the Blue Ridge Environmental Defense League, asphalt plants may produce chemicals called prolic or ramadic, <laughs> or PAHs, which have been shown to increase the risk of lung, stomach, skin cancer for people who breathe them in, have them land on their skin via dust particles, or drink them. Please protect our community from this harmful chemicals and stop the plant. We enjoy our clean air. Next, we have Lynn Schaffner. Hello, my name is Lynn Schaffner. And I am a resident of the Anderson community. I'm concerned about the increased air pollution will affect my existing heart disease. The EPA states that there is a proven association between air pollution and increased plaque buildup in blood vessels. My health will very likely be impacted by the plant. Next, we have Rufus Knight.
Okay, do not hear Rufus Knight. Next we have Brenda Jones. Do not hear a Brenda Jones. Next we have Danny Schaffner. Hello, my name is Danny Schaffner and I'm a resident of the Anderson community. I'm worried about the toxic fumes that the asphalt plant will produce, including benzene, which is known uh, to cause leukemia. Per a fact sheet created by the Blue Ridge Environmental Defense League, the Anderson community cannot afford this risk to our health. Next, we have Mona Ruffin. Hello, my name is Mona Ruffin, and I have and I I've been a resident of Anderson community for over 20 years. I've worked. I, wor I am worried that the asphalt plant will produce arsenic, which is known ca uh, kerosene in humans. A fact sheet by the Blue Ridge Environmental Defense League on harmful toxins produced by the asphalt plant states that living near a polluting industry increase, uh, increases exposure to arsenic, which increases the risk of lung cancer. Please protect the Anderson community and stop the plant. Next, we have Joseph Lawson. My name is Joseph Lawson. I got you. And I am a concerned resident of the Anderson community. I am worried about the toxic fumes that may be produced by the polluting asphalt plant, including benzene. A UNC study found that a community in Salisbury, North Carolina, experienced six times the rate of brain cancers after the polluting asphalt plant moved in. Please protect our community from this toxic fumes and stop the plant from polluting the air. Okay, uh, going forward, can you you are starting off saying I am Joseph Lawson? Can you say this is the Reverend Brian Schaffner speaking for, so we can clarify for the record going forward? To my understanding, you have sure. to control I, those people tonight. Okay, uh, I don't want to get the record confused. You're claiming to be a Joseph Lawson, okay. so now we yes. have a, a now we have a Tony Harris, please. Yes, I'll go to, I, I guess I'll read for him. This is Reverend Brian Schaffner. I'm going to continue reading. A lot of them, they're getting tongue-tied or, or a little nervous, so I'm going to read for him. Okay, uh, now, which one did you have? Tony Harris, please. All right, Mr. Harris. This is Reverend Schaffner. I'm reading for Tony Harris. Uh, hello, my name is Tony Harris, and I am concerned, resident of the Anderson community. I am worried about the toxic fumes that may be produced by the polluting asphalt plant, including benzene. The UNC study found that a community in Salisbury experienced the same issue. I am worried for my community. Please stop the polluting industry. Next, we have Andrea Corbett. Nothing for Andrea. Next, we have Cornelius Jones. Hello, my name is Cornelius Jones. Frank Simmons, uh, Cornelius Jones, right here. All right, got gotcha. you. And, and as a concerned resident of Anderson community, I am worried that my property value will decrease significantly if an asphalt plant or any other polluting industry moves near my home. A report by the Blue Ridge Environmental Defense League found that housing prices dropped by up to 56% in Panola, North Carolina, since the asphalt plant moved into their community in 1999. And we don't need a similar effect in the Anderson community. Please stop the plant from destroying our community. Next, we have Janet Wiley. Reverend Schaffner reading for Janet Riley, Wiley, uh, and I, she states that I am a resident of the Anderson community with kidney disease. 2019 community health assessment found that from 2013 to 2017, 27.2 deaths per 100,000 residents were caused by kidney disease in Caswell County, compared to 18.8 .8 per 100,000 residents for the state of North Carolina. This county and this community are much more impacted by this disease and do not need another environmental hazard. Ronnie Faust. Bernice Faust. Hello, this is Bernice Faust. 
Uh, I live in the Anderson community. I am worried about a, a huge increase in truck traffic in our community if the asphalt plant is allowed to operate. Asphalt plant in Los Angeles is expected to have over 660 truck trips per day when producing 700,000 tons of hot mix asphalt plant, uh, per year. Please protect our community from this noise and pollution and stop the plant. Sandy Corbett. Okay. This is Reverend Schaffner reading for Sandy Corbett. I'm a concerned citizen of the Anderson community. Polluting asphalt plants require trucks to move the asphalt. And the asphalt plant in Greensboro called Colfax reported producing enough asphalt to fill hundreds of trucks per day. The pollution and noise caused by these trucks will ruin our health and disrupt the peace in our neighborhood. Please stop the plant. Bobby Harris. Kalia Jones. Hello, my, this is Reverend Schaffner, Marie for Kalia Jones. I am a resident of the Anderson community and I have enjoyed the peaceful and calm quality of life that country living offers. I am very worried that the noise produced by the asphalt plant and associated truck traffic will severely disrupt the peace and quiet that we enjoy. Rachel Jones. Reverend Schaffner. I am a resident, uh, reading for Rachel Jones, I'm a resident of the Anderson Community Asphalt Plant. It can be heard up to one mile away. As reported by residents of Buncan County, the plants also operate around the clock during some parts of the year. Mm -hmm. As someone who already suffers from chronic sleep issues, this plant will only make that worse. Selena Schaffner. Vance Riley. Mabel Ruth. I'm going to continue to read for some of them when they walk up. My name is Mabel Ruth. I am a resident of, this is Reverend Schaffner. Uh, reading for Mabel Roof. I am a resident of the Anderson community. Our community already experienced foul smells and noise due to Animal Conservative Center, which is located nearby. Nearby, UNC studies show that polluting asphalt plants produce hydrogen studies, which cause foul smells. We cannot afford to have these additional odors in our community and ruin our time spent outdoors. Please stop the plant. Elizabeth Love. Poonam Patel. Okay, Reverend Schaffner, would you, it sounds like a lot of your congregation would like to uh, have you speak for them. And it sounds like you're reading, you're reading from their prepared documents um would they like to at this point since they're not giving verbal comments themselves uh would they like to submit in writing and we are treating all comments equal whether they be oral email writing mail otherwise uh would you like to continue what we're doing right now or would you like to submit all this in writing to us and we will take it into account I will submit them all in writing I will get them from them compile them submit it in writing so that way uh, I won't keep drinking a whole lot of water as well. Since they're shaking <laughs> and that would save a lot of time as well, if that's okay. Okay, and our, our comment period for deadline is this Wednesday at 5 p.m. Look forward to your email. Um, and just to confirm, you have the group of people that were uh, conducting their oral comments through your venue and your phone and you guys have yes. gathered. And they are in Correct. agreement, you are in agreement, and they are in agreement that we may cease oral comments for these registered uh, by your submittal, and we will accept written comments uh, per the usual mechanisms, preferably the email, 
by Wednesday, 5 p.m. Uh, you guys are in agreement with that and your group? Yes. Correct? I, yes, we all agree. All right. Thank you very much, Reverend Schaffner. And we're going to circle back to the beginning of the night. Um, and there was a somebody we called upon that wasn't able to speak. We're looking for Crystal Cavalier. Uh, Crystal, can you, uh, Rahat, can you help Crystal attend or see if we have any sign that Crystal is there and would like to speak? Sure. Uh, Crystal, if you've uh, dialed by phone, please press star three so I can identify your line. That'll help me unmute you. Thank you. Crystal, um, if you've dialed in by telephone, please press star three so I can identify your line. Um, thank you. I'm not able to uh, identify her line, bro. Okay. Crystal, we are, if you're on the line, we are still available for equal treatment of uh, written comments, email, uh, dial the phone number on the screen. Um, mail as well. Um, okay, it looks like we have, uh, that is all the names we have registered to speak. We have some remaining time. So at this time, if you would like to speak and haven't already spoken, please put your name in the Webox, WebEx chat box, which you can access at the bottom right hand of your screen. Once we call your name, we will ask you to either raise your hand in WebEx or press star three on your phone so that we can allow you to be unmuted and provide your comments. Once you have provided your comments, please lower your hand or again, press star three. Again, we have some extra time for folks who have not had a chance to comment. Uh, Rahat, do we have anybody indicating they would like to speak? Not at this time. But let's give it a minute just. Okay. See. Again, I'll read the instructions. Um, we have remaining time. So at this time, if you would like to speak, please put your name in the WebEx chat box, which you can access at the bottom right hand of your screen. Once we call your name, we'll ask you to either raise your hand in WebEx or press star three on your phone so that we can allow you to be unmuted and provide your comments. Okay, Rahat. Anybody indicating they would like to speak that hadn't already registered and spoken? I do have a hand that's raised. Um, not sure. Please identify yourself and please make your comment. My name is Sharon Guy. And I live on East Hughes Mill Road, down the street from where this plant is supposed to be located. My family goes back in this area to 1738. They're members of the Okaniki tribe. Before it was a tribe, they were just residents of this area. And Indian ways always go back to earth, sky, water. Food is the basis of your community. How do you grow food when you're going to have dust settlement? Air quality, you're going to have dust settlement from cement, benzene, and toxic chemicals falling on your food. We live here, and we would like to live in peace. The air that will settle on the food will, not, will make that food so you cannot eat it. The water, we're sitting on our aquifer. Once they start the runoff, it's not just air, it's water. It's the land, which will be ruined. Life, there's 100,000 gallons per day that they're going to use of water from that plant. Where is the runoff going? 
It's going to pollute every stream that leads down to to the aquifers, the water that goes for all the way down the Eno River. The truck traffic is going to be unbearable. Our roads already messed up. The diesel exhaust that comes out of those trucks, if you go down the road, you can go behind a diesel truck who's hauling stones or rocks. What's coming out of his smokestack? Black soot. That's got to settle back on the earth. That's part of air quality. We don't want to breathe it. Not 24-7. We do not want to breathe it. Indian Way says earth, sky, water. They're going to ruin all of them. How do you live with that? We are stewards of this land and must maintain it for future generations. At what point does your neighbor create a nuisance, nuisance that begins to impact the use and enjoyment of your own property? Is there a trigger point where they cross the line? Sharon, you are, oh, you are over your two minutes. Can you wrap it up, please, and spell your last name for me? Thank you. Sharon, what's, how do you spell your last name? Sound like a Sharon guy. And do we have anybody else in the chat, Rahat, that may want to make some final comments here but hasn't already commented? Yes, I have one more. Um, please identify yourself and make a comment, please. Yes, my name is Michael Russell. I tried to early, uh, register early, but I did call uh the government, and they told me that I will be able to uh, leave a comment this evening. Um, like I said, my name is Michael Ross. I live on Ross Acre Road Number 2 in the Amsterdam community. Uh, I just want to express something about my health myself. I suffer with COPD and sleep apnea. And when I have those tap with that COPD or sleep apnea, my lungs uh, inflames a lot. Just imagine... I'm dealing with that and with this aqua plant coming in here. So I just ask that y'all do not lie to the permit to bring this aqua uh, in this uh, community. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Uh, Rahat, do we have any other? Yes, um, uh, Mr. Mayor, please go ahead. Your line has been unmuted. Thank you. This is State Representative Greg Meyer, and I just wanted to say thank you to the staff for conducting a very efficient, effective public hearing and being here with the folks from Caswell County tonight. And thanks to everyone who came out to speak about this important public issue. Senator Mike Woodard was here earlier, and I've been here, and we are listening to all voices and communicating with the Department of Environmental Quality about what we're hearing from the community. So thanks to everyone for exercising their rights as North Carolina citizens today. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Rahat. Uh, keep an eye on the text uh, chat box. Do you see any more people indicating they would like to speak tonight? Not at this time. All right, we'll get it another half minute here just to confirm. All right. Uh, if you did not speak tonight, but still want to provide comments on the issuance of an air quality permit to Carolina Sunrock LLC, remember there are several other ways to provide comments until the end of the comment period on September 22nd, 2021 at 5 p.m. You can call 919-707-8726 and leave a voicemail message with your first and last name, who you are representing, and state that your comments are related to Carolina Sunrock. Burlington North. You can provide written comments until the comment period ends on September 22, 2021. To provide written comments, please email them to daq.publiccomments at ncdener.gov with Carolina Sunrock, Burlington North in the subject line. Or you can also mail written comments to the address listed in the public notice. Based on the information received during tonight's hearing, 
and comments received throughout the comment period, I will make a recommendation to the Director of the Division of Air Quality for his consideration in making a final decision on whether to issue the air quality permit to Carolina Sunrock, LLC, Burlington North. I thank you for your cooperation, attendance, and interest in the air quality permitting process. This public hearing is now adjourned. Thank you.